We are going to start where we have been doing most of this week on the uh, coronavirus situation here in South Korea. The country is seeing an uptick, unfortunately, in cases ahead of the easing of restrictions set to kick in from next week and potentially making matters worse. Korea's notoriously cold winter is steadily closing in. And for more on this and other COVID-19 related updates, joining us live in the studio is our reporter Choi Min Jung. Good morning, Min Jung. Good morning, Min Jung. Let's start with the daily figures for today. How are what what, not, what are we expecting? Well, the officials are forecasting today's um, daily tally to go above 2,000. Um, from midnight to 9 p.m. on Wednesday, South Korea confirmed more than 1,900 new cases. This is more than 70 cases compared to the same period the previous day. Authorities also revealed South Korea's total variant cases for last week totaled 3,300. All but one were the Delta variant. If you just look at the domestically transmitted variants, 100 percent were Delta. On top of this, South Korea saw almost 20,000 breakthrough infections. This is equal to 0.074 percent of fully vaccinated people. Most were in their 30s and those who had the Janssen vaccine. Now, we hear that South Korea's health authorities are on extra alert for numerous uh, reasons, especially this week. Tell us more about that. Right. There are growing concerns of a potential uptick later this week. It's almost November, so we are approaching winter, which health experts say causes the virus to spread much more easier than it can in warmer weather. On top of that, there's the upcoming flu season, so authorities are not letting their guard slip. Let's take a listen. COVID-19 and influenza are respiratory viral diseases with similar symptoms. When a patient with a fever visits the hospital during the winter, it's more difficult to differentiate the viruses. We ask the public to actively participate by getting vaccinated against influenza as well. And there is a third factor, Halloween. It's time when young people go out to mingle with friends and let their hair, hair down. Well, given the current circumstances, it seems like it's all the more important to up our vaccination rate. How is that going? Right, so the government is go going to announce plans on expanding booster shots uh, this afternoon. They will likely address plans on giving booster shots to, th to those who receive the Janssen vaccine. As I touched upon before, they currently are the most vulnerable group to breakthrough infections. They are also expected to talk about whether Janssen and Moderna vaccines will be added as booster vaccines. Right now, only Pfizer's is being used as the booster shot for medical workers and seniors above 60 who received their last shot more than six months ago. The country is also pressing ahead with vaccinating teenagers. For teenagers 16 to 17, more than 62 percent have reserved shots and 28 percent have received their first doses. For those between 12 and 15, just under a quarter have made reservations. As of now, the country is not reviewing vaccinations for kids under 12. Right. And we must say that for minors under the age of 18, they must get parental consent before they reserve uh, a vaccine, of course. So that's vaccinations covered. Let's talk a bit more about the various COVID-19 treatments that we hear are about to hit the market here in South Korea. Right, so gov the government will soon sign a contract to purchase oral COVID-19 treatments enough to cover 400,000 people. This is 10 times more than what was originally planned. The government has been negotiating with overseas pharmaceutical companies with the aim of bringing in the oral treatments early next year. The details will likely be announced on Friday. And currently, Merck is waiting for approval for the oral antiviral treatment Molnupiravir from regulators in the U.S. and Europe. The company has also decided to share the license for the treatment with a UN-backed nonprofit organization to allow companies to manufacture generic versions. The licensing agreement is expected to expand access in more than 100 countries. Well, that's a rare sign of generosity from a pharmaceutical giant. So hats off to Merck for uh, doing that. Wonderful reporting as always, Min Jong. You'll be back with Mo Gyan for our new newscast. So. Uh, we will see you then. Thank you. Thank you.